In the book of Revelation, chapter 6, the four horsemen written of in the first four seals have an obvious twofold meaning. It has to do not only with the global implementation of the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion, but also the appearance of Satan as Antichrist at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, which is when the first four seals, trumpets, and vials go into their ultimate spiritual meaning. That is to say, spiritual death when that third or slain spirit Spiritually, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 9, spiritual famine to the utmost extreme, spiritual war, and Satan will have appeared in his role of Antichrist, the rider of the white horse in the first seal. In the build-up to the five-month-long hour of temptation, the first four seals written of in Revelation chapter 6 begin with the fourth seal and the hidden dynasty of education, which lines up with the first trumpet in the first vial. So 411, a number synonymous with information, but here it's false information and the brainwashing that causes those who don't bother to study God's word for themselves to be deceived now and especially during the five month long hour of temptation so Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7 and when he had opened the fourth seal Christ being the only one who can open your understanding to the scriptures I heard the voice of the fourth beast the fourth living creature say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse that's chloros in the Greek translated as green in the first trumpet, and his name that sat on him was Death, one of Satan's names, and hell followed with him. In the build-up, Satan's evil spirit, as well as the evil spirits of his fallen angels, spreading deception throughout the world, setting people up to be killed spiritually whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. And power was given them over the fourth part of the earth, this means the entire globe, four is the number of earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. The four hidden dynasties in the build up to 666 and then from that point forward spiritual death famine and war with satan that rider of the white horse in the first seal appearing as antichrist at that time again four is the number of earth and at 666 satan's global religious system comes into being the beginning of the globalization of the four hidden dynasties and the build up to that point began in 1830 that's when the first trumpet began to sound but it's not until all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time in the middle of that hour of temptation that the seals, trumpets, and vials go into their ultimate spiritual meaning. That's when that third are slain spiritually by the deception, which you can read of in the first four trumpets, and that doesn't happen until all six trumpets are sounding, and the type you'll find in Daniel chapter 3. The first vial was poured out in 1830 when the rapture deception came into the world, the main reason most Christians will receive the mark of the beast in their forehead which is the deception but that doesn't happen until the first six vials have been poured out when satan appears as the instead of christ which is what antichrist means so 411 began in 1830 the false information 322 began in 1913 the hidden dynasty of economics the federal reserve system coming into being at that time think global implementation with these the federal reserve system runs the world economically through the dollar the dominant global currency and when he had opened the third seal i heard the third beast the third living creature say come and see and i beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts the four living creatures say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny a denarius in the greek that is to say a day's wage this having to do with inflation as far as economics are concerned and that's controlled by the Federal Reserve System, but spiritually we're talking about the famine for hearing the word of the Lord. That you can read of in Amos chapter 8, where you can also read of the balances of deceit, the balances of deception, the famine for hearing God's truth, the bread of life becoming worse than ever before when Satan appears as Antichrist and floods the world with his deception. But see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, and remember the compassion of the good Samaritan who bound up the wounds of the injured man pouring in oil and wine the compassion of God's elect who hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord our God, receiving God's blessings. Now and during the hour of temptation, God takes care of his own and his election won't be affected by the famine for hearing God's word. The second seal lines up with the third trumpet and the third vial, 233, and the globalization of the hidden dynasty of politics in 1945 with the United Nations. Notice the symbol of the UN is two olive branches surrounding a 
map of the world split into 33 sections. 233, the hidden dynasty of politics. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, the second living creature, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, the opposite of the sword of the Lord, which is God's word that brings us peace of mind. This sword does just the opposite, because it's not the sword of truth, but rather the sword of deception. And every war is started with deception, in case you haven't noticed. Wars and rumors of wars continuing right along until the hour of temptation. Whenever they cry peace and safety, that happens after the great horn of the he-goat written of in Daniel chapter 8 is broken, which is the United Nations, in my opinion. The current so-called global order has to be pushed aside to make room for the new world order, which comes into being at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and the UN will provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world political system. At the woe of the fifth trumpet, when Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth, and the one world political system emerges, then it receives a deadly wound by a sword. Then at the woe of the sixth trumpet, Satan appears as Antichrist, and by peace shall he destroy many, spiritually speaking. And that you can read of in Daniel chapter 8 as well. Meanwhile, the spiritual war continues with all six trumpets of deception sounding at the same time. Again, the type you'll find in Daniel chapter 3. When all six trumpets of deception are sounding, that's when the one world political system becomes a one world religious system whenever Satan appears as the false Christ, which brings us to the first seal, which lines up with the fourth trumpet and the fourth vial. 144 and the hidden dynasty of religion, beginning globally in 1948, in my opinion. And I saw when the Lamb, Christ Jesus, the only one who can open your mind to the truth, open one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, one of the four living creatures you can read of in Revelation chapters 4 and 5, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, that's toxon in the Greek, which means as the simplest fabric, a cheap fabric imitation of the rider of the white horse in Revelation chapter 19, the true Christ who doesn't return until the seventh trumpet. This rider of this white horse in the first seal is the false Christ, Satan in his role of Antichrist, when he appears in Jerusalem at the sixth trumpet. So what happened in 1948 set the stage for Satan to appear as Antichrist in Jerusalem at 666 and went forth conquering the spirit of Antichrist, that is to say, beginning in 1948 when this final generation began, the spirit of Antichrist that you can read of in the first epistle of John went forth conquering and to conquer. And that's at the sixth trumpet when Satan appears as Antichrist and the four horsemen take on their ultimate spiritual meaning. The true Christ won't return until the seventh trumpet and that's when Satan's role of Antichrist and his one world system are destroyed forever and ever. In other words, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are destroyed at the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns. And at that same time, all are changed into spiritual bodies and Satan himself is locked up in the bottomless pit until the thousand years are finished. Then he's released and whoever follows him then is blotted out in the lake of fire, which is the second death. Blotted out of existence forever and ever, but not before Satan himself is turned to ashes from within, as promised in Ezekiel chapter 28. Everyone else goes into the eternity, the third world age. Daniel chapter 3 says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, that's sixty, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon, which means confusion. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, a type of Antichrist, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. This looks forward to the sixth trumpet, obviously, whenever Satan appears as the false Christ and the image of the beast will be Satan's image transmitted throughout the world with the modern day technology and they'll worship him via satellite. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, a type of Antichrist, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, all peoples, nations, and languages. That's what the waters in the book of Revelation are symbolic 
symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, that's the first instrument listed here out of the six that we'll see listed, the cornet being a precursor to the modern day trumpet. And as you can see here from a book called The Early Horn, stoltzel valves could still be found on cheap cornets up to the beginning of the First World War. But an alternative, Ullman's Vienna valves were patented as early as 1830. And here from a website called Trumpetland, as you can see here, one of the parts of the modern day trumpet is the water key key invented around 1830 so the cornet the flute harp sackbutt psaltery dulcimer that six instruments and all kinds of music which means all six sounding at the same time you fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king has set up and they'll worship the beast thinking that he's christ return they'll worship satan at the sixth trumpet and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace notice the word midst here and satan appears in the midst of daniel's 70th week which has been shortened to five months the hour of temptation so we have here a perfect example of what happens at the sixth trumpet when satan appears as antichrist with the six instruments being symbolic of the six trumpets of deception written of in the book of Revelation because it's at the sixth trumpet that Satan appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ and that's when all six trumpets of deception will be sounding and that third are slain spiritually as it's written in Revelation chapter 9 Nebuchadnezzar being a type of Antichrist and if you were to continue reading Daniel chapter 3 you would see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to fall down and worship the image and they were cast into a fiery furnace but weren't even singed their clothes didn't even smell like smoke so there you have a type of God's election during the hour of temptation whenever they're delivered up to death which is one of Satan's names and the Holy Spirit speaks through them that you'll find written of in Mark chapter 13 as well as Luke 21 where Christ says not one hair of your head shall perish in your patience possess ye your souls and I am of the opinion that the first trumpet began sounding in 1830 then the second trumpet in 1913 followed by the third trumpet in 1945 and the fourth trumpet in 1948 when the final generation began. So at that point in 1948, the first four trumpets were all sounding in unison and they have to do with the setup of the four hidden dynasties of education in 1830, economics in 1913, politics in 1945, and religion in 1948. So beginning with the hidden dynasty of education in 1830, and Nebuchadnezzar's name even means Nebo protect the crown, Nebo being the Babylonian false god of education, in this case miseducation, because not only was it in the mid to late 1800s that the public schooling system was set up in America, brainwashing the masses into a false reality, as it is this day and it gets gradually worse and worse as time marches on but it was during the 1800s that it was made mandatory to go to school by law with the board of education being set up and the so-called educational reform that went on at that time this was a global operation as well but it's not only the educational system itself the public school system and the universities where they brainwash people into a communistic ideology nowadays that's just one aspect of the hidden dynasty of education because you also have the mainstream media being set up during that time as well the washington globe was founded in 1830 the main propaganda arm of the democratic party which was only two years old at that time so they were setting up the left right paradigm in the 1800s as well the republican party wouldn't come along until a few decades later so the hidden dynasty of education is an umbrella dynasty that involves all four of the hidden dynasties dynasties it keeps the political delusion going as well as the economic and even the religious with the cemetery schools initially and then through the double agents they produce who then work from the pulpit to further the religious miseducation so this hidden dynasty of education provides the initial brainwashing with the school systems and nowadays children's television programming and on down the list and this is perpetuated by the mainstream media Reuters being the main source for raw news articles that are then spun to fit the agenda 
and Reuters was founded in 1851. Some even say the Rothschilds bought Reuters toward the end of the 1800s, and Eustace Mullins was once quoted as saying the Rothschilds invented Zionism, fascism, Nazism, and communism all in 1830 in Germany, and there's not a dime's worth of difference between any of them. 1830 also being the year Adam Weishaupt died, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, and it was also in 1830 in Scotland that the pre-tribulation rapture theory, the any moment flyaway doctrine came into the world through Margaret MacDonald. And that brings us to how the first trumpet, the first vial, and the fourth seal line up with each other. That's 411. The fourth seal, the first trumpet, and the first vial as in information. 411. But we're talking about misinformation here, miseducation, that is to say deception. And beginning in Revelation chapter 8 verse 7 with the first trumpet, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt up, that's the third that dies spiritually at the sixth trumpet, when all six trumpets are sounding, but here we're talking about the build-up to that with the four hidden dynasties. There's a build-up, and then when all six trumpets are sounding at the same time, like we saw in the type in Daniel chapter 3, that's when Satan appears as Antichrist, and most of the world worships him, thinking that he's Jesus. He'll have two horns like a lamb, but he'll speak as a dragon, because he is the dragon, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan. And all green grass was burnt up, and that word green is chloros in the Greek, translated as pale in the fourth seal, as in the rider of the pale horse, which is death, one of Satan's names, as you can see in Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast, the fourth living creature, say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, that's Chloros in the Greek, and his name that sat on him was Death, one of Satan's names, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, four being the number of earth, this means all the earth, to kill with sword and with hunger, that's famine, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. That's therion in the Greek, that means a venomous beast. So again, this fourth seal lines up with the hidden dynasty of education, and it concerns all four hidden dynasties, the sword being the political, and the hunger being the famine, that's economic in the build-up. There's a spiritual meaning as well, the famine for the end times being hearing the word of God. The economic ties directly into that, though, because of usury, People don't have the time to study the Word of God when they trap themselves in the snare of the Kenites. That's why you need to study God's Word so you can know how to dodge the fiery darts of the wicked one and his children. And with death, that's education, one of Satan's names. Remember Nebuchadnezzar, type of Antichrist. Nebo, protect the crown. Nebo being the false god of education. And with the beasts of the earth, Therion in the Greek, a venomous beast in the buildup with the religion dynasty in 1948 and the beginning of the generation of the fig tree that has to do with the spirit of Antichrist, which is within the Kenites, and that's the conquering written of in the first seal. And I saw him behold a white horse, and him that sat on him had a bow, toxon in the Greek, which means of the simplest fabric, a cheap fabric imitation in the build-up, the imposters who claim to be Jews but do lie and are the synagogue of Satan, those with the spirit of Antichrist, the evil figs, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, that has to do with 1948 up until the sixth trumpet, and to conquer. That's when Satan appears and they receive the mark of the beast, which you find written of in the first vial. That mark of the beast in their forehead, which is the deception that Christ has returned when it's actually Satan. Remember, the vials are plagues, spiritual plagues of the mind, and Margaret MacDonald was patient zero, and from her it spread to epidemic proportions. Believing Christ will return at any moment is what sets people up to worship the false Christ, the Antichrist, who is Satan, and in the Greek, Antichrist means instead of Christ. Instead of Christ, they'll worship Satan. So Margaret MacDonald was patient zero of the first plague of Revelation 16, and it spread throughout the earth 
Over the past 188 years or so, and the word earth is another thing that the fourth seal, the first trumpet, and the first vial have in common. You'll notice that word earth written in all three, the fourth seal, the first trumpet, and the first vial, 411. That's information, or in this case misinformation, with the hidden dynasty of education beginning in 1830, in my opinion, and continuing on up until the true Christ returns. Nebuchadnezzar was a type of antichrist, the king of Babylon of old a type of the king of Babylon of the end times. Babylon means confusion, so the king of confusion is Satan as Antichrist, and again, Nebuchadnezzar means Nebo protect the crown, Nebo being the Babylonian false god of education. So it's miseducation we're talking about, misinformation. And here we have the seal for the Department of Education for the United States with its sturdy trunk set in solid earth. The tree expresses the confidence and strength imparted to the individual through the development of the mind and the assimilation of knowledge. And who is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That old serpent called the devil and Satan, the natural branches of his family tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, being his children, the Kenites, those who claim to be Jews but do lie and are the synagogue of Satan, who manage the four hidden dynasties, education, economics, politics, and religion. And when Satan appears as Antichrist, most Christians will be cut off of the tree of life, God's family tree, and grafted onto Satan's family tree, destroyed for lack of knowledge, the true knowledge, which is the truth of God's word that prevents you from being deceived and receiving the mark of the beast in your forehead, which is the deception. So get into God's word now while there's still time. As we've gone over before in covering the seals, the trumpets, and the vials in the book of Revelation, there is a setup before the actual spiritual death takes place at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, involving the four hidden dynasties and the formulation of the one world political system, the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, that does not emerge until the woe of the fifth trumpet. It's then wounded to death, and that's what the fifth vial is, and then we go from from 555 to 666, which is when Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem, after which the true Christ returns at 777, the seventh vial, the seventh trumpet, and within the time frame of the seventh seal. But in the first four vials, you're going to see the globalization of each of the four hidden dynasties, beginning with education, then economics, politics, then religion, with what's actually being written of not occurring until the sixth trumpet. And what I want to draw your attention to are the semicolons that you'll find in Revelation 16. That's what separates the initial setup from the ultimate actuality. And beginning with verse 1, with the word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name it reads, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 2, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, semicolon. Now this was in 1830, but what you read after this doesn't happen until the sixth trumpet, the sixth seal, and the sixth vial. It can't happen until then because there isn't a mark of the beast until Satan appears as the false Christ. That's when they receive that mark of the beast in their forehead or in their right hand, which is the deception, the deception that Jesus has returned, and they'll die spiritually at that time. With Christians being the only group who can die spiritually, this vial is specifically poured out upon Christianity with the rapture theory of 1830, when a mentally ill teenage Scottish girl was ground zero of this first plague, the any moment doctrine, because if Christianity believes that Christ will return at any moment, they're going to worship the false Christ, because Satan appears as the false Christ before the true Christ returns. So the first went, the first angel, and poured out his vial upon the earth, semicolon, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and this can't happen until the sixth trumpet, the sixth vial, and the sixth seal, and upon them which worshipped his image, the image of the beast, an image of Satan being transmitted throughout the world via the modern day technology. They'll worship him via satellite. That's the image that they're going to worship. Remember, Satan exalts himself above all that is called God or worshipped, as you can read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So then, obviously, this image, the image of the beast, is an image of Satan. 
Next, we come to the second trumpet, which brings us up to the year 1913 in the buildup with the hidden dynasty of economics because of the Federal Reserve Act, the dollar being the global currency. And as we saw in part one of this series, Eustace Mullins was once quoted as saying the Rothschilds invented Zionism, fascism, Nazism, and communism all in 1830 in Germany. Eustace Mullins wrote the book Secrets of the Federal Reserve and in chapter five goes into detail about how it was the House of Rothschild behind the creation of the Federal Reserve System which came into being in 1913. The most powerful men in the United States were themselves answerable to another power, a foreign power, and a power which had been steadfastly seeking to extend its control over the young republic of the United States since its very inception. Remember Adam Weishaupt created the Bavarian Illuminati in 1776 and then he died in 18. 30. This power was the financial power of England centered in the London branch of the House of Rothschild, reserve currency being another name for global currency and the Federal Reserve System coming into being in 1913 led to the Bretton Woods Agreement about three decades later, which according to Kimberly Amadeo in an article called Why the Dollar is the Global Currency, the Bretton Woods Agreement kick-started the dollar into its current position. So think global as far as these four hidden dynasties are concerned, and 1830 being the educational, now we come to 1913 and the hidden dynasty of economics. The number of Earth is four, so again, think global, and through the four hidden dynasties, the Kenites and their co-religionists formulate the one-world political system that will emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and at the woe of the sixth trumpet, all six trumpets of deception will be sounding at the same time, so the third that we see written of in the first four trumpets aren't killed, spiritually speaking, until the sixth trumpet. So bear that in mind as we go to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8 and see the twofold meaning here. The second trumpet began to sound in 1913 when the Federal Reserve System came into being, and that trumpet's been sounding ever since. And at the sixth trumpet, it takes on its ultimate spiritual meaning. So Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8, and it reads, And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain, which is symbolic of a nation, burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Ultimately, this is the Christian nation, which isn't any specific geographic location, but rather the many-membered body of Christ worldwide. A third of the earth are Christian at this time, and think about it, only Christians can die spiritually because they're the only group who have eternal life abiding within them. Christ is the only way to the Father, and whosoever believeth upon the only begotten Son of God shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. But at the sixth trumpet, most Christians will begin to worship the devil, and then they're no longer Christians. They're dead, spiritually speaking. That fire is extinguished whenever they worship the false Christ. God's elect won't be killed spiritually at the sixth trumpet because they won't worship the false Christ. They're the 7,000 written of in Romans chapter 11 who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So again, then the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and in the buildup with the four hidden dynasties going back to 1913, you could also take this to mean the United States being cast into the sea, which is symbolic of people, written of in Revelation 13, that the one world political system rises up from at the beginning of the hour of temptation. Again, there's a two-fold meaning having to do with the buildup in the four hidden dynasties, and then ultimately at the six trumpet when all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time and the third part of the sea became blood spiritually dead when satan appears at 666 in other words that's what happens to a christian whenever they begin to worship the devil they die spiritually and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died meaning they were christians on their way to everlasting life but then they died spiritually and the third part of the ships were destroyed, and this has a spiritual meaning as well, and as much as Christians are supposed to be vessels unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work, as we know from 2 Timothy chapter 2. But when a Christian worships the devil, they're no longer a Christian. They're a Satan worshiper, and they become Satan's vessels, so to speak, carrying out the works of iniquity, which is the in their right hand part of the mark of the beast. That's why God's elect are called the ships of Chittim, because 
because they remain vessels of our Heavenly Father being delivered up to death, which is one of Satan's names, and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through them during the sixth trumpet. As far as the build-up to that is concerned, the ships written of in the second trumpet signify commerce, which brings us back to the economic dynasty, which began in 1913, with the second trumpet lining up with the second vial and the third seal. So 322, beginning in 1913, the number of the skull and bones, incidentally, and we see in the third seal a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. These are the balances of deceit you can read of in Amos chapter 8. So it has to do with deception, and Amos chapter 8 also speaks of the famine for hearing the words of the Lord. That's ultimately what this third seal has to do with. That famine is obviously in the world now, but at 666, it will reach the ultimate extreme because of Satan's appearance as Antichrist. So 322, and the second vial has to do with the sea as well, which is symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And you'll find the second vial written of in verse 3 of Revelation chapter 16. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, beginning in 1913, and then we see the semicolon, which means what follows won't occur until 666. That's when Satan appears in Jerusalem as Antichrist, and the first six seals, trumpets, and vials go into their ultimate spiritual meaning. And it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. The only living souls being those who believe in Jesus Christ. They'll die spiritually for the most part, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, with the exception of those whose names were written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, God's election. So there you have the 322, which lines up with the hidden dynasty of economics, and 1913 with the build-up to the hour of temptation. Again, in Daniel chapter 3, we saw the type of the sixth trumpet there, with those six instruments all sounding at the same time, and the second instrument listed there is the flute. As you can see in your Smith's Bible Dictionary, the flute used in those days was made of reeds and of copper and other material, the principal wind instrument, and the first time you see anything of that nature written of in God's Word is in Genesis chapter 4 with Cain's genealogy, and one of the first batch of the Kenites was named Jubal, which means a stream of water. Remember the second trumpet in the second vial had to do with water, the sea that is to say, and Jubal was the father of all such just handle the harp and organ, the organ being a general term for all wind instruments according to the Smith's Bible Dictionary. The Hebrew word probably denotes a pipe or perforated wind instrument such as the flute we see as number two on the list in Daniel chapter three. And it won't take you very long to figure out it was the Kenite money changers who brought about the Federal Reserve in the year 1913. And as far as the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial is concerned, you cannot have a one word world religious system, a one world government, without first installing a one world economic system. And this takes us back again to Revelation 13. After Satan appears as Antichrist, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, which is a figure of speech, which means the work that you do, or in their foreheads, which is where your mind is. It's the deception that Satan is Jesus, and that's why that third dies spiritually and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, that man of sin, written of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and his number is 603 score and 6. That's when Satan appears as the sixth trumpet, the sixth vial, and the sixth seal. That's 666. And once Satan appears as Antichrist to heal the deadly wound written of, in Revelation 13, there will be a one-world economic system basically already in place. We see the formulation of it now, but this will be a one-world religious system that requires the inhabitants of the earth to worship Satan in order to receive the one-world currency. And as we know from Revelation chapter 9, the seven-year-long tribulation of Satan has been shortened to a five-month period. It was seven years, now it's five months. Satan doesn't appear as Antichrist until the middle of 
of the tribulation. As we know from Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, the middle of a five month period is two and a half months into it. So then the time between the appearance of Satan as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet and the return of the true Christ at the seventh trumpet is only about 70 days. My point is, we don't have all that long of a wait before the true Christ returns and God takes care of his own. As Christ said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? And then if you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Having covered the first and second trumpets, which line up with education and economics, we now come to the third trumpet, which lines up with the hidden dynasty of politics, with the United Nations coming into being in 1945 as far as the event that signified the point in time when the third trumpet began to sound, and the third trumpet lines up with the third vial and the second seal. So, two, three, three, the second seal, the third trumpet, and the third vial. And if you examine the flag, of the United Nations, you'll notice two olive branches, there's the two, and a circle divided into 33 sections. So two, three, three, two olive branches and 33 sections with the flag of the United Nations, which will provide the skeletal structure for the actual one world political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Remember, these trumpets continue sounding all the way up until the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and destroys Satan's one world government. Remember, we saw an example brought forth in Daniel 3, where it wasn't until all six instruments were sounding at the same time, symbolic of all six trumpets of deception, that the people were commanded to fall down and worship the image Nebuchadnezzar set up, a type of what happens whenever Satan appears as the false Christ at the woe of the sixth trumpet. And third on that list was the harp, which we already saw traced back to Jubal the Kenite, the father of such as handle the harp and organ, as we know from Genesis chapter 4 verse 21. Jubal meaning a stream of water and as we're about to find out the third trumpet and third vial have to do with the waters which are symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So with that having been said let's turn to Revelation chapter 6 and find out what the second seal has to do with. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 3 and when he had opened the second seal I heard the second beast the second living creature say Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, spiritually, ultimately, whenever Satan appears, and there was given unto him a great sword. And as Christ said in Mark chapter 13, verse 7, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. So when you hear them cry, Peace and safety, and the one world political system, written of in Revelation 13 emerges at the woe of the fifth trumpet, that's when the end, that is to say the final five months before the true Christ returns, is upon us. And that doesn't happen until Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. That's at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and that's when all four of those beasts you can find written of in Daniel chapter 7 rise up together in a one world political system. And that happens once the great horn of the hego written of in Daniel chapter 8 verse 8 is broken so to speak, and then four notable ones, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the fourth beast replace it at the beginning of the five month long hour of temptation. In my mind, the he-goat is the shadow government of the Kenites, and the great horn of the he-goat is the United Nations, the same as the one who sends a razor of taxes to properly translate that verse in Daniel chapter 11 verse 20, and I believe the global carbon tax to be the razor of taxes sent out by the United Nations. 
Then at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the United Nations will provide the skeletal structure for the actual New World Order, as they call it, just as the League of Nations provided the skeletal structure for the UN. So moving on now to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 10, and the third angel sounded, beginning in 1945, in my opinion, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And again, this is the political beast of Revelation 13, ultimately, which begins when Satan is cast to earth along with his angels, but there is a build-up to that with the formulation of the skeletal structure of the actual New World Order with the four hidden dynasties. We're on the political at this point. The ultimate fulfillment doesn't happen until the sixth trumpet, and it all ends at the seventh trumpet whenever the true Christ returns and destroys Satan's one world system. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Remember, the waters are symbolic of people's multitude nations and tongues, but it isn't until the woe of the sixth trumpet that Satan appears as the false Christ and that third dies spiritually. Verse 11, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. This ultimately is the opposite of the living water Christ spoke of in the Gospel of John chapter 4 where he said, the water that I shall give him, whosoever will, shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This Wormwood is the opposite of that because for for every positive, there's a negative. And the third part of the waters became wormwood. They became bitter, and many men died spiritually of the waters because they were made bitter. How many men? A third of men will be slain spiritually at the sixth trumpet. You can read of it in Revelation chapter 9. After Satan, also known as Lucifer, the fake morning star is cast to earth and that one world political system emerges, it then receives a deadly wound by a sword. But then when Satan appears as Antichrist, he heals the deadly wound as it's written in Revelation 13, that deadly wound to the political beast. And that's when it becomes a one world religious system at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. When Satan claims to be Christ returned and the whole world, except for God's elect, whore after him. That third dies spiritually when they worship Satan, who will have two horns like a lamb, but he'll speak as a dragon because he is the dragon. Those two horns are symbolic of the political and the religious because Satan will claim to be the king of kings and lord of lords when he appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet. You have to be alive spiritually speaking before you can be killed spiritually speaking so it's no mystery who that third are they don't die spiritually until 666 but getting back to the 233 we now come to the third vial and we'll find that written of in revelation chapter 16 and verse 4 and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters we saw rivers and fountains of waters in the third trumpet also the second seal the third trumpet and the third vial and we're on the the third vial. And what comes after the semicolon here in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 4 will not happen until Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem. And so it is with these first four vials. You'll have the vial poured out, then the semicolon with what follows not happening until the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. So in the case of the third vial, the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. That happened in 1940 with the United Nations coming into being, in my opinion, the hidden dynasty of politics being globalized. Then we see the semicolon, and what follows doesn't happen until Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem. And what happens at 666? That is to say, the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial to the rivers and fountains of waters, which symbolize peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And they became blood, which means they'll die spiritually whenever they begin begin to worship the devil. When a Christian begins to worship the devil, they're no longer a Christian. They go from being a virgin, spiritually speaking, and become part of the whore of Babylon, which is the opposite of the virgin bride of Christ. There is a space for repentance, so they don't have to remain dead, spiritually speaking. They can repent because they're not aware that it's Satan that they're worshiping. And this word blood in the Greek can also mean the atoning blood of Christ in the positive sense, which is what the actions 
of the two witnesses have to do with that you can read of in Revelation chapter 11 verse 6. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous, are thy judgments. So there you have it. Those responsible for all the righteous blood shed from Abel to Zechariah being the sons of Cain, the Kenites, those stones worn smooth over a long period of time. Those who run the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion, and at 666, the Virgin Bride of Christ will for the most part become the whore of Babylon, merging together in a one world religious system with the synagogue of Satan. Satan becoming partakers of their evil deeds, as it's written in the second epistle of John. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So if you so much as wish them God speed, you become a partaker of their evil deeds. What do you suppose happens whenever the Christians begin to worship the false Messiah in unison with the synagogue of Satan? They become the whore of Babylon. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, the many members body of the true Christ is supposed to be anyway. It's supposed to be the virgin bride that waits for the true husband. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid, as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. So this is why you see the whore of Babylon in the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 6, drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. That blood guilt of the Kenites is now upon them because they've become partakers of the evil deeds of the sons of Cain. This is ultimately where the hidden dynasty of politics will lead to if you're not too careful. The left-right paradigm, it's all but become a religion in and of itself, and it's a plague of the mind, which is why it's one of the seven last plagues written of in the book of Revelation. All roads lead to 666 as far as the deception is concerned, so come out of the confusion of the hidden dynasty of politics as well as the other hidden dynasties and get into the unadulterated truth of our Father's word now while there's still time. Verse 18. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw and behold four horns. Now these are the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion. And isn't it interesting? It's verse 18 of chapter 1. That's 118. The first one began education in 1830. And then the fourth one, religion, 1948, 118 years. And here you have the four hidden dynasties in Zechariah 118. Coincidence? Well, decide that for yourself. But regardless, 118 years going up to 1948. Now we come to the fourth trumpet, which I believe began to sound in 1948 when this final generation began, the generation of the fig tree. And as Christ said in Mark 13, verse 28, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, not fruit, but leaves, ye know that summer is near. Summer is harvest time, which as we know from Matthew chapter 13 is the end of the world. That's when the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet and sends his angels to gather first the tares, the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as well as those grafted in, and bind them in bundles to burn them. They will be blotted out in the lake of fire unless they get their act together during the millennium. These tares are the evil figs written of in Jeremiah chapter 24. But gather the wheat, the good figs of Jeremiah 24, into my barn to Jerusalem at the seventh trumpet. So again, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, that's fig leaves, ye know that summer is near. Fig leaves are what Adam and Eve used to cover up their nakedness out of shame because of what happened in the Garden of Eden whenever Satan impregnated Eve with Cain, the Kenites being the sons of Cain, the generation of 
vipers, the natural branches of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, those who are in Christ are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The Kenites are the offspring of that old serpent called the devil and Satan. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. This is Christ speaking here in Matthew chapter 13. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. And just as a Kenite, a tare can convert to Christianity and become wheat, they become Abraham's seed by adoption because they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the tree of life, and they're then grafted on to God's family tree, the tree of life, which is true Israel, the many-membered body of the true Christ. But on the other hand, most Christians will be deceived into worshiping Satan when he appears as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet, and once a Christian begins to worship the devil, they're no longer Christians. They're tares by adoption, cut off of the tree of life and grafted onto the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the many-membered body of the Antichrist, also known as the Whore of Babylon, as opposed to the Virgin Bride of Christ. So with this final generation, beginning in 1948, with Kenite-occupied Israel coming into being, you also have on the positive end of the spectrum, God's elect, the good figs being born into this final generation, beginning in 1948. So the fourth trumpet lines up with the fourth vial and the first seal. That's one four. Beginning in 1948, but not going into their ultimate spiritual meaning until 666. That's when that third die spiritually and become grafted onto the evil tree, and that's what the fourth trumpet has to do with, is the spiritual death of that third. But it began to sound in 1948 in the build-up to that, and it lines up with the hidden dynasty of religion. It was also in 1948 that the World Council of Churches was formed, so one four four sets the stage for 666 when Satan appears in Jerusalem as Antichrist. That's the rider of the white horse in the first seal ultimately is Satan appearing as the false Christ. As you can see in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 2, a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This word bow is toxon in the Greek and means as the simplest fabric, a cheap fabric imitation of the rider of the white horse in Revelation 19 who returns at the seventh trumpet which is the true Christ. Here in the first seal we see the Antichrist but as far as the build up in the hidden dynasty of religion is concerned it has to do with the spirit of Antichrist that went forth conquering in 1948 that's when the hidden dynasty of religion was globalized and notice it says he went forth conquering and to conquer the conquering beginning in 1948 with the spirit of Antichrist, that's every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's the spirit of Antichrist, as we know from the first epistle of John in chapter 4, verse 3. That's why her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves rather than fruit, because only a Christian nation can bring forth fruit for the kingdom of heaven. The true Christian nation not being a geographical location, but the many-membered body of the true Christ throughout the world. The Kenite nation, on the other hand, is not a Christian nation. Far from it. They're the synagogue of Satan and are waiting for their so-called Messiah to appear, their father the devil. So he went forth conquering the spirit of Antichrist on a global level beginning in 1948 and to conquer whenever he finally appears in Jerusalem at 666. Conquering and to conquer with false Judah returning to that land in 1948 setting the stage for the false Christ to appear there. And again, the word bow means of the simplest fabric. Remember the type written of in Daniel chapter 3 where all six instruments were sounding at the same time, symbolic of the six trumpets of deception when the people were commanded to fall down and worship the image Nebuchadnezzar set up, a type of Antichrist who went forth conquering and to conquer Jerusalem also. So the fourth instrument on the list lining up with the fourth trumpet in Daniel chapter 3 verse 
five is the sack butt. And when you look up that word in your Strong's Concordance, you find out that that's really a liar. L-Y-R-E, liar. And this article on the history of the liar shows how the bow harp transitioned into the arched harp and then the arch liar, again, toxon means as the simplest fabric, translated bow in the first seal that you can read of in Revelation chapter 6. As the simplest fabric, a cheap fabric imitation, the Kenites claimed to be of Judah, the tribe David was from, who was famous for playing the harp, the harp and the lyre being very similar to one another, and Satan will appear in Jerusalem claiming to be Christ, the root and the offspring of David. So 144. And having already looked at the first seal, we move on now to the fourth trumpet. That you'll find in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded beginning in 1948, but remember, it isn't until 666 that the spiritual death occurs, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise, looking forward to the woe of the sixth trumpet, ultimately when that third are slain spiritually, and the other two thirds were dead already, because think about it. How can you die spiritually unless you were alive spiritually? Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and this is made perfectly clear in the last two verses of Revelation chapter 9, that the other two thirds were already spiritually dead because they weren't in Christ. Verse 20 of Revelation chapter 9 says, and the rest of the men, those beside the third that were slain spiritually, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. They were worshiping other gods, therefore they were never living spiritually to begin with. That third that are killed spiritually at the sixth trumpet are the Christians, most of Christianity except for God's elect, those whose names were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So obviously the other two thirds of the sun, moon, and stars we see in the fourth trumpet were already darkened, so to speak. They were already spiritually dead because they were never in Christ to begin with, leaving only a third, and that third will be darkened, killed spiritually, that is to say, at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. So that pretty well covers the negative, and moving on to the fourth vial in Revelation chapter 16, verses 8 and 9, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. Then notice the semicolon there, meaning what follows won't happen until the sixth vial. And not only is this almost identical to what the two witnesses will do, as you can see in Revelation chapter 11, verse 5, but as far as this beginning in 1948 and the build-up to 666 is concerned, it has to do with God's elect being born into this final generation, and after the semicolon in Revelation chapter 16, verse 8, the Holy Spirit speaking through them whenever they're delivered up to Antichrist for refusing to fall down and worship his image, which is simply an image of Satan transmitted throughout the world. In Acts chapter 2, we saw those cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, the twelve apostles, that is to say, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. That's languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And if you read on down to Acts chapter 2 and verse 8, as you can see, the people that heard this said, How hear we, every man in our own tongue, our own language, wherein we were born. So when the Holy Spirit speaks through God's elect during the sixth trumpet, it will be transmitted throughout the world, and everyone that hears it will understand it in their own language. This will bring the 144,000 out of the confusion and into the truth, and there we see that number once again, 144. This time multiplied by a thousand, and the 144,000 will teach during the thousand years called the Levites in Ezekiel 44, with the 7,000 very elect being called there the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok. And after the thousand years are finished, we see that number 144 in the third world age, with the wall of the new Jerusalem being 144 cubits, that's 12 times 12, with 12 being the number of governmental perfection in biblical numerics. So there we see the ultimate positive outcome of all this once the negative are destroyed in the lake of fire. For every positive, there's a negative, and there's a negative part of God.
God's plan, which ultimately, as you can see, has a positive outcome. So rewinding back to the events of the sixth trumpet, without the negative, the fire, which is the truth, wouldn't burn those who are on the wrong side of the fence, spiritually speaking. So chapter 16 and verse 9, this not happening until the sixth trumpet, when the elect are delivered up to the false Christ and the Holy Spirit speaks through them. And men were scorched with great heat with the truth, that is to say, coming from the mouths of the two witnesses and God's elect, and they blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. That's for the most part. Some will come out of the confusion, which is what Babylon means, and repent when the Holy Spirit speaks through God's elect, but for the most part, they won't realize the truth until the true Christ returns and all are changed into spiritual bodies, and that's when they'll want the mountains and rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, the true Christ returning at that time when all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. For the great day of his wrath is come, and a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and who shall be able to stand, as it's written in the last two verses of Revelation chapter 6. That's when the millennium, the thousand years, begin, and discipline will be taught by Christ through the Zadok, and by extension, the 144,000. The 44th chapter of the book of Ezekiel is where you can read of that. Then after the thousand years are finished, those who didn't take part in the first resurrection into eternal life will have the choice to either follow Satan at that time and be blotted out in the lake of fire, which is the second death, or to stand against Satan at that time and take part in the second resurrection into eternal life and go into the eternity, which is the third world age.